Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game two in a best of three between Tarsh and Eugen in the grand final of the third Asia Pacific tournament. In the previous game we saw Eugen take the victory which means Tarsh has to win this game or he will be taking second place and Eugen first of course. Um, but yeah, if Tarsh can win, um, he has a chance to go to the third game and maybe bring things back, which would be really, really interesting. Now, what's more interesting is we're seeing Bois de la Mort, and on the Allied side, Tarsh is bringing out the 7th Armoured, and on the Axis side, Eugen is using the Festong Gros Paris. So, two of the divisions from the latest DLC coming out here, and... That's really, really interesting. It looks like they've managed to sneak their way through the bands. And honestly, Festong, probably in a community sense, the most overpowered division in the game at the moment. Although the 7th Armoured isn't far behind, in my opinion. The thing is about the Festong is, of course, those 125-point bombers, which really need adjustment. But... Um, Honestly, in a 1v1, I'm not sure we're going to see too many of them, mainly because in a 1v1, you're you're very much more under pressure, and spending 125 points on an aircraft is actually something that uh, definitely leave, leaves you weaker on the ground. Um, so unless those bombing strikes really hit the mark and allow you to surrender multiple units, their use in a 1v1 may not be as great as it is in a 3v3 or 4v4 where you can work with other people and those bombers become really, really effective. Um, but what we're more likely to see is just the focus on the infantry. Bois de la Mort will definitely show us that. Um, with the Veston Gros Paris, we have things like Landerschutzen, you've got the Beverongs, you've got the ROA, and then he's not going to be alone though. In the good infantry department. On the side of the 7th Armoured you do have Desert Rats and those guys will be very very strong for taking on those Festong units. However I think Festong may be okay um, if they can keep the health of the squads uh, relatively high. But let's have a look at some of the units going down here. So on the top side we have Tarsh with the Staghound. He's got two motorized rifles there. Three motorized rifles for the mid in these M5 half tracks, and then on the bottom side, it's going to be three white trucks with those desert rats. They're going to be accompanied, of course, by a command, and we see a staghound going to that bottom side as well. So, very, very nice setup there for Tarsh. On the side of Eugen, he's going to have a Panzerschreck, Fell Gendarmerie, he's got two Landerschützen, he's got a Beverongs in there a mortar and the Aufklader in the Panard MG. There's another Panzerstrike there. He's also got the uh, Pack 38 there, followed up by some Lander shoots in. And for the top side, it's going to be a Panzer Jäger with an IG-18, um, Panard M MG with the Aufklader, Panzerstrike, um, and Panzerstrike and Lander shoots in for the mid. So it looks like Eugen's strategy here is really to accompany those Lander shoots in with Panzerstrikes so that he can kill half tracks efficiently whilst also allowing his infantry to continue their engagements. So I like the choice of this Panzer Jäger. It actually works pretty well against the earlier units that the 7th Armoured are going to be bringing in. There's always a lot of focus on staghounds with the 7th Armoured so a Panzer Jäger can do relatively well especially if it has some command nearby. I'm surprised not to see any command go to that top side but maybe uh, Eugene will bring that in once he gets the first tick of reinforcements, we'll have to wait and see. By the way, this 50mm mortar down here has unloaded. The infantry is getting into its position. And it's not going to be long until we see an infantry engagement occur in this forest area. These desert rats getting themselves into position, accompanied by this motorized rifle leader. So, Tarsh's position on this map is very strong right now. What he has that Eugen doesn't, is these half tracks and these half tracks can really push ground quite effectively against all of this infantry that Eugen is trying to utilize at the moment and it's really going to take Eugen maybe overextending with some of his infantry to stop a plus one on the side of Tarsh. So a good lead 
um, for Tarsh early on, putting the pressure on already, going to force Yudin to react. Now, one thing that can be a problem with the Festung is if you uh, sort of focus a lot on the infantry, it can be a very slow division to push. Whereas the Seventh Armored, because it has the armor like the Staghounds and the Half Tracks, can definitely take advantage of salience very easily indeed. So Tarsh will definitely have an easier time taking advantage of any ground he does make um, throughout this game. So Desert Rats are managed to keep themselves hidden on this bottom side. They're going to be bumping into the Lander Shoots in here. Let's see how well they do. So that's going to be 6 HE versus a solid 12 at that range. However, with the overwhelming numbers here from Eugen, it looks like these Desert Rats are going to be pushed back. And like I mentioned, with the high health squads, it will make things difficult for the Desert Rats. And uh, Eugen, they're going to be using this 50mm mortar to try and pin those Desert Rats down as they try and fall back. But the Stuart Remy is driving over here to provide fire support as these troops get to the edge of the tree lines. Uh, we can see Desert Rats taking on Lander Shoots on the top side. Now these Desert Rats, yeah, they're fantastic at close range, but they're not the best at close range. Um, 12 HE, yeah, it's a lot, but it's not as good as some other units. Now this Staghound playing with fire, they're getting shot at by the Pack 38. Um, the Desert Rats get shot in the open by the Bivirongs here. Stuart Remy is going to open up onto that squad, but it won't be long till Eugen falls back with that or covers himself with smoke. Nice use of the smoke from the Feld Gendarmerie there. So initial infantry engagements going in favour of Tarsh. That's what I, what I sort of predicted. And, um, well, not in, tar in favour of Tarsh, in favour of Eugen. And that's what I yeah predicted with the higher health squads that Eugen would be using. But uh, in this case, it looks like Eugen is allowing his lander shoots in to be picked off one by one. And that is one way to lose those particular units. Meanwhile, in the center, half tracks coming into play as the motorized rifles move forwards. If he can pin down those lander shoots, and he might make quite a lot of ground in the mid here. He can't necessarily cross the half tracks across this river very easily, um, but he will be able to have the infantry, his infantry, the motorized rifles, continue forwards. So both the lander shoots in here taken out. Mortar fire going to be coming down onto some of those desert rats, though. Um, Eugen did make ground on the bottom side. Pandastrex trying to get itself into position to take care of the Stuart Remy and allow him to continue onwards. So these desert rats, um, it looks like they may bump into these Panzerstrex. But uh, with more infantry on the way for Eugen, that's some Beverongs that will really stop the desert rats from making too much more ground there. And as soon as they unload and they use their Mosin Nagants and the FM 2429, they will be able to win that engagement at range, especially against the Bren guns that the Desert Rats use. So in order to reply to the push coming out of Tarsh in the mid here, it looks like Eugen's going to rely on an IG-18. That's actually a pretty nice choice because it can pin these half-tracks, but... At the moment, he's more worried about these motorized rifles that did just manage to clean up his lander shoots in there. More infantry coming into on this bottom side. That's going to be three units of lander shoots in. And the overwhelming amount of infantry availability should be able to win Eugen this forest. However, it looks like Tarsh is focusing quite a lot on the half tracks and the Stuart Remis, which is definitely interesting and will help him out a lot. Pack 38 manages to sneak a shot onto this Staghound. Is going to force it to fall back. Will the Staghound remain in the open? I think it will. It's just a matter of time, really, until that Pack 38 hits it. its target. And there we go, Staghound down. Nice job by Eugen down here. So, yeah, utilizing his infantry advantage, I think Eugen can make a lot of ground through this forest. But uh, with Tarsh making such a dent in the center of the map so far, um, removing this plus one from Tarsh is going to be hard work. Staghound's going to be uh, coming down here to support these motorized rifles as they push forwards. That's going to be engaging the IG-18 here. You can see the M5 half track coming up as well. It's going to drop off some more motorized rifles. Um, but this push may be stopped by the Panzer. It really depends on the performance of that versus the Staghound. On this top side, Pack 40 is going to be pinned down. Looks like it did manage to get a transmission damage onto the Stag Helm, but the Stuart Recky and the M5 half track sort of returning fire there, keeping that pinned very nicely. 
Mo drive rifles uh, starting to engage some of the infantry in the centre, but the IG-18 is on target. It's actually hitting some of those that M5 half track at the moment. Panzerstreck currently holding fire. Looks like Eugen really wants to be able to target this staghound if he can. He's going to have to turn that back on and try and do his best, but it missed. The Panzerstreck missed, and it's going to get absolutely wrecked. However, the Panzerjäger took advantage of the ambush and managed to kill off one of the staghounds. Really, really good job here by Eugen. Can that Panzerjäger kill off the staghound as well? We'll have to wait and see. It's continuing to fire at some of these half tracks. Eugen's going to pull it back. But really, really nice ambush there by Eugen. Took full advantage of that with the Panzerjäger, using the Panzerfaust and the Panzerjäger to advance at the same time. So Eugen on the bottom side, really demonstrating some good infantry play. He's pushing forwards with these lander shoots and backing them up with a 50mm mortar. That's going to allow him to advance onto those motorized rifles, possibly um, do a lot more damage there, but he really needs to pin the motorized rifle leader if he wants to find a surrender. Meanwhile, on this top side, Pandashrek does pick off a half trap, but reveals its position by doing so. Pack 40 has been killed in the process of this push, and things are really falling apart for Eugen on this top side. Panard MG is in a really, really bad position, and now Eugen's going to be bringing in a Befell Panzer III. But that, I believe, will need to head to this top side to start cleaning up these Stuart Reckies and M5 half tracks that Tarsh is using to put on so much pressure right now. Panzerjäger has got itself into a position to help out and that's going to be really good if it can kill off a couple of these um, troop carriers. This is one thing that really makes the 7th Armoured very oppressive is that they have all these motorised units and they can take advantage, like I mentioned before, of these salients and you can see that happening as they sort of approach and move through here and that's just putting so much pressure onto Eugen that he can't just defend everywhere. There's so many units that he's got to try and clean up and it's really reliant on these like tanks that he has, the Panzerjäger and the Befell Panzer III here, to get the kills onto these Stuart Reckies and half tracks. Because as soon as he does, Tarsh falls apart. But before that, it's actually very hard for Eugen to deal with. Because these motorized rifles on their own are actually pretty bad. Now we can see Staghound's going to be engaging this Befell Panzer III here. Uh, Panzerjäger is also trying to get involved. We're going to be attempting to take out that Stuart Reckie up there. This Panzerjäger did get a shot onto that M5 half track. I'd like to see that focused by Eugen. But it looks like uh, Eugen is really trying to make ground on the bottom side here. And a nice bombing strike out of the Spitfire Mark IX does hold back some of the lander shoots in. Panzer 39 also a really nice choice to help deal with some of these machine gun vehicles at close range. So fantastic job there. However, most of the infantry out of Tarsh does have AT, so he's going to have to be a little bit careful with that. But Verdongs might take out these motorized rifles uh, leader and that will make it a lot easier to kill these desert rats as well. So, so far, uh, Eugen has not done too bad in cleaning up a lot of these forces. Panzer is going to take out the Staghound up here. Really, really nice kill. He has the Befell Panzer III engaging the Staghound, but that's got a weapon jam from the first shot. He is going to need to get out of there, and he's going to have to bring in some supply to fix that up. Otherwise, that Staghound can just take advantage of that engagement and uh, destroy that vehicle very quickly. Eugen's just going to be running away from there. Spitfire Mark IX still hanging about on this bottom side, uh, but uh, Eugen is slowly but surely cleaning up the infantry in this forest. Lander shoots and, and the Bivirongs there doing a great job, but the Staghound find the kill onto the Panzer III. Really, really nice shot there from that Staghound, cleaning that up, and that is not going to be repaired anytime soon. Panzer Jäger goes down on this top side to the absolutely awesome Stuart V career. It's finally good, you know, it's good to finally see that come in. And a really, really nice shot there. This two-star veterancy is absolutely insane on that tank. When you make it a three-star veterancy with command nearby, that thing can just go off. And in this case, cleaning up one of the Panzerjägers and the Befell Panzer III going down definitely weakens the defenses of Eugen, and he's going to have a lot of work to do. But with this Stug 3 on the way with the two-star veterancy, he should be able to engage that Stuart 5 nicely, uh, but I won't... Well, I wouldn't expect Tarsh to allow that to happen. Um, Eugene really just needs to engage as soon as he can there, but kind of missed the opportunity to get a shot off. So down here, we're going to be seeing the infantry 
get surrendered to Eugen. Uh, Eugen's doing a good job of keeping these Fel Gendarmery alive, and it looks like he's used his smoke as well. It could be an issue going up against more of the armoured units, but uh, this Panzer 39 has really been helping control the half tracks and Stuarts that he's come up against so far. But one thing we do have to realise is that Tarsh is still at a plus two at this point, and the points are ticking up very rapidly indeed. Oh, nice kill there on that Staghound. This Staghound has been absolutely hero throughout this game so far. Takes out an infantry squad for free there. Really, really nice job. So we see these uh, KFZ-70s coming in with more infantry. They really need to find these motorized, rifle uh, motorized rifles and clean up this bubble because that is causing Eugen a lot of problems, basically allowing Tash to maintain that plus two. Now I'm surprised that Tash on the bottom side here hasn't taken advantage of the Panzer 39 being so close to the forest and went for the uh, attack there. Looks like he's more concerned about killing off his infantry and is going to take out one squad there. These desert rats now going to double team the Fel Gendarmerie. And the Fel Gendarmerie, they do pack a punch. They have similar HE. But two units of desert rats, definitely going to get the job done. Another unit of infantry surrendered there to the Bavierongs. And those Bavarongs can just hang about forever. So, Panzerverdichtungs is going to be used on this top side. Interesting to see those coming out to play. Uh, definitely strong squads. Six man Panzerstrecht squads are never a bad thing. But um, I'm just surprised to see them brought out in this position. I think AT guns would definitely serve them better in taking out these half tracks and the Stuart Recchi there. I'm also surprised that these KM Marine Infantry have been used um, since they are only five-man squads and they don't really pack a punch. Like, they have five HE at 300 meter range, which can be okay, but um, honestly, I really don't like them compared to some of the other units he could be bringing in in this phase, like ROA. I really want to see some ROA on the field. Now, Panzer B2 going to be uh, taking on this Staghound here. The great thing about the B2 against the Staghound is that the B2 has eight front armor, so it actually makes it very difficult for the Staghound to penetrate it. And uh, the other fantastic thing about a B2 is it has its main gun and its howitzer, so it can pin down those Staghounds quickly as well. Now since this Staghound has found itself with a weapon jam, um, Eugen is just going to get aggressive with the Panzer Jäger and try and kill that off because that will definitely relieve the pressure in the middle of the map which they will then allow his lander shoots in to make some ground back for him. Now one thing I have noticed throughout this game is that uh, Tarsh's recon in the center here has actually been really really good. You can see just how many of these important units he's spotting. He's got the Stug 3, he can see the mortar, he can see the B2 and the Panzer Jäger, he knows exactly what's coming. He did lose his Staghound down here, but that was inevitable with the Weapon Jam. But on the side of Eugen, things not quite the same. He's really struggling to see a lot of these units. Yes, he can see the armor because it's pretty obvious. Um, but uh, in terms of his recon placement, he's got recon here, but it's just in the middle of the forest, of course. Ideally, those would be hanging around on the edge of the forest so that he can see the reinforcements coming his way. And we can see the Panzer, or the 50mm mortar, sorry, uh, taking on these motorized rifles. That might allow this Lander Schutzen to get a favorable engagement there. Pack 40 is on the way now to accompany that defense in the mid, but that's just what it is at the moment. It's a defense. And Eugen is really struggling to push back at the moment. And it doesn't really get much better throughout this phase due to the 7th Armoured getting the 135 points per minute. Obviously Eugen matches that, but when it's equal and he's already at a disadvantage, it's going to be hard to make himself an advantage and stop this plus 2 that really is ticking up very quickly from Tarsh. 9 minutes and 30 seconds and Tarsh definitely piling on the pressure with the 7th Armoured here really doing a fantastic job to show the weaknesses of the Festung. So you can see that he has just focused a lot on this infantry and Tarsh has kind of just played around that. He's played to his strengths by pushing in the open, like more open areas and that's really, really smart. 
So these half tracks are able to make ground and just being an absolute nuisance in holding ground that you didn't basically doesn't want him to. Now pack 40 has arrived here that could definitely start cleaning up some of these units. Uh, getting rid of this Stuart Recky would be a start and that's what he's going to do. That will then cover his infantry if he wants to bring that in and try and push forwards. On this bottom side, Panzerjäger and the B2 are going to be engaging the Staghound. Staghound really won't last very long under that fire. Going to be forced to fall back for sure. And whether or not it falls out of line of sight remains to be seen. But uh, the Panzerjäger here and the B2 are going to be picking up other targets, which is... One thing honestly that I find actually quite annoying about the fallback mechanic is your units, especially if they're on attack move, tend to automatically change target when a unit gets fallback. back and sometimes it does make sense to do that if you just want to keep the pressure on multiple units but especially when it's sort of focusing on specific expensive units you want to make sure that you continue the fire as much as possible onto that one target. Now ROA have arrived down here and these guys are absolutely ludicrous in close quarters combat. They've got the 14 HE there which is better than these desert rats and they will clean them up very quickly with their 11 man squads. That is the beauty of ROA. Not only do they have good HE but they're also really high strength. They have a lot of men. Now off map is going to be coming in here from Tar. She does manage to pick off the pack 38 in the forest there, so that's quite a nice kill for this Cromwell 4 OP, especially considering that, that Cromwell 4 can also be used as a main battle tank. Now on this top side, um, Eugene is kind of struggling to make that ground. He really needs to find these half tracks as soon as possible. This Panzer 39 really needs to get aggressive here. And same with the Stug. He's just got to advance into these areas like just get the mortar to fire there and then have the stug move in um the panzer 39 you could definitely sacrifice that by just fast moving it up here like it doesn't really matter if there's forces in here the worst it could be is a peat and that has a chance of missing quite a lot so getting aggressive with the panzer 39 is definitely a good idea now what you can see is because Eugen has managed to pretty much take control of the entire forest down here, things have gone back to 51% or even 50-50 now for Eugen. So he's managed to stop the points coming in for Tarsh. But how long can he maintain this? He's really done a great job of focusing on this forest area where he knows he probably has an advantage. But now he's just got to clean up at least the mid if he can't clean up the top side. Now it looks like the half track here was taken out. This half track's had its engine destroyed. It looks like it maybe moved in front of the Panzer 39, but Eugen hasn't taken advantage of that yet. So maybe just not noticing this occurring as he's likely might create the bottom side of the map here. But this Stuart 5 still causing issues, gonna force back those ROA. This Stuart with a 50 cal, it, it's just honestly, the best Stuart in the game. But the fact that it is not only two star and it has recon capabilities, it also has a 50 cal. And that is just really, really good. So Eugen finally managing to get some points on the board here. He's actually found himself a plus one, but the Cromwell 4 and the Staghound now going to be taking on the B2 here and really doing a lot of damage. It's only a matter of time until they find the kill but uh, Eugen coming in with the smoke to save the day really nice play there from Eugen. So 3 is now engaging the Stuart 5 on this top side and with track well destroyed and that's going to be a very dead Stuart 5. Beverlong's going to be taking on these Reki as they accidentally bump into them but the Bofors Porti has got the Reki's back going to be pushing those Beverlongs away very nicely indeed. Now it is of course still a plus one and uh, that means that Tarsh is still going to win and honestly that puts so much pressure onto Eugen right now. It's going to be extremely hard for him to find a plus two against this division. Like, he could start investing in the bombers and try and pin down the armoured vehicles he's up against and then try and rush them with some of the lighter vehicles that he has. But in this case, it looks like Eugen's invested in the Befal Panther. Now, the interesting thing about investing in a Panther on this map is it's not very open. So he is quite exposed to AT ambushes and 
just close range engagements in general which never really favour panthers especially against things like shermans and fireflies and all that good stuff so yeah we're going to have to wait and see how this befell panther does but I reckon if that goes down it's definitely going to put a hole in Eugen's defences and while this 6 pounder did just kill off the Stug and that is a very big hit indeed 50mm mortar just a little bit too slow there to hit the mark and that's definitely going to affect Eugen pushing on this top side now Mosquito Pathfinder has been used here to try and pin down this Befell Panther and it seems to be working so far but the Befell Panther just getting out of the flames in time before it's forced to fall back so looks like Eugen here going to be bringing up some more infantry his B2 did get killed off and that is tragic especially after he made that smoke play the B2 still went down looks like uh, he just maybe wasn't paying attention because he probably could have kept the smoke up until the B2 recovered but in this case not going to happen and wow that mosquito came in the mosquito fighter and almost completely pinned this pack 40 that revealed itself now D520 going to be used to engage the mosquito here that thing is just so slow but the mosquito can't do anything about it that's like a classic war game conundrum that is or War Thunder conundrum even. And the plane you're fighting against is so slow that it gets an advantage. In this case, both of us Porty gonna shoot it down. D520. Wow, that certainly failed, didn't it? <laughs> I knew that they were bad aircraft, but that just showed it. <laughs> That's incredible. So these are away. Uh, they are actually gonna fall under pressure from these rifles. Unfortunately, no matter how many ROA you have. It looks like Tosh has way more rifles and he's going to be pretty much 2v1ing these ROA squads that are already on low health and making a dent back into this forest area. Now there is two ROA on these bottom sides and if they stick together and they pick off these rifles one by one then they there could be a quite nice advantage made here. Uh, but Tarsh does not want that to happen, of course. He's going to be bringing in a Spitfire Mark IX. And honestly, he's been making pretty good use of this uh, on this bottom side to hold back the aggression from Eugen throughout the game. Now, we can see things uh, sort of returning to a normality here. 53% um, territory lead for Eugen. But honestly, as this game progresses, it's just going to get harder and harder for Eugen to make ground. Because eventually it's going to get to the point where Tarsh starts bringing in the three-star fireflies. And then this panther at close range is really going to suffer. Because those fireflies are just deadly accurate. And uh, they don't need a shortened range to be that accurate. But Tarsh here is actually going to invest in this um, two-star 17-pounder. And if he can get that into a good position, this is one very dead foul panther now it's got line of sight through this tree line if it can get a kill that would be absolutely perfect and would really put a dent in Eugene's plans however as you can see on this bottom side rifles are making ground and as long as Tarsh continues to keep on the pressure throughout this game he will win and it's just making it harder and harder for Eugen right now. The longer Tarsh just keeps Eugen at a plus one for his sake, it, it just, it, again, it just continues to. Time, time is of the essence here. And it seems like Eugen knows it. And he's going to surrender after the 25 minutes, 43 seconds. Going to cede the game to Tarsh. Interesting time to surrender, in my opinion. But, um,. Yeah, I think honestly Eugen just wanted to reset, sort of maybe getting frustrated with that game, didn't think he could bring it back in time, and that's fair enough, and we definitely saw that that was the case. So in the end, uh, we do see that Tarsh was leading with kills, 1,915 kills to 1,355 losses. If we jump over to these kills, did that panther go down? No way. That's what happened. Motorized rifles killed the Befell Panther. Or did the Befell Panther kill the motorized rifles? 
17 pounder picked off the Pfeil Panther. There we go. Okay. I was going to say, if a Piat killed his Pfeil Panther, I would probably rage quit too. But no, it was a 17 pounder that we said would probably get the kill. Unfortunately, I missed it, probably just because Eugen surrendered on the spot. And, um, well, that's, yeah, that's game. Because without that Panther in play, it's going to allow those fireflies to really do a lot of work and definitely makes things difficult. But in my opinion, I don't, I didn't, I didn't really like the choice of the panther on that on that map. Why not just start bringing in the bombers? Hmm, interesting stuff. Anyway, um, let's go through these kills a bit more. Desert rats definitely doing well against two units of Landerschutz and, and a Panzerschreck. Staghound, really, these Staghounds in the phase A of uh, the 7th Armoured are really, really scary. And in this case, managed to take out the Befell Panda 3. They took out Panda Shrek squads. Took out the IG-18. Pack 40 went down there to a Staghound. Wow. This Stuart 5 is absolutely crazy. Managed to take out the Panzer Jaeger. Didn't get a lot of kills, but I've seen these Stuart 5s do so damn well. Um, M5 half tracks are really causing issues across the entire map. Also, the Stuart Reckies and Stuart Remies. And um, the six pounder there, um, taking out that Stug 3 was a big deal on that top side. Definitely removed a lot of pressure that Eugen had. But uh, honestly, it was interesting to see that Eugen had brought it back to a plus one and then surrendered. I don't know. I feel like maybe if you focus on the bombers at that point instead of the, the Panther. It could have been a lot different. Anyway, in terms of losses, not really too much to see here. The choices of the Panzer 39s against all those half tracks and Stuart Reckies and Remies is a really good idea. This Panzer Jaeger definitely showed up, cleaning up a lot of those. Two stag hounds there, four half tracks, and a Stuart. Really, really good job. This choice of the Panzer Jaeger, I really liked that at the start. It looked like Eugen realized what he was up against and um, took advantage of it with that vehicle. Stug 3 did take out the Stuart 5, but got killed by that 6-pounder. And, uh, yeah, that is it. So, an interesting game, interesting second game. I think the surrender was a bit mistimed, but it uh, looked like more of a rage quit due to the Befell Panther. But there we go. Um, Eugen still has a chance to win this, going into the third game. Uh, Tosh bringing it back to 1-1. One, one. That's what we like to see. All three games in a final. Beautiful. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.